The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 278 Skyport Blues The transportation station in the first Skyport terminal was dark and desolate as valets soared in for the pipe to sky freeze. There wasn't a trace of emergency power remaining, but the same spectral light that refused to let the eastern valley go unlit filtered in for the blinding snow, giving more than enough illumination for Valet to make her way by. She flapped over a dead transport car sitting at the terminal in an endless way for passengers who were safe in their homes and vaulted onto the loading platform Starlight tucked under her back, straining her senses and cutie mark to pick up any danger beyond the omnipresent crushing force of the storm outside. She toggled her pendant again, feeling another flash of green. It no longer felt like she was wearing her sister around her neck. The pendant had been reduced to a tool she could trigger without thinking, and it was a useful one, the sensation of it being active forcing back some of the wrongness in her body that came from a combination of deep cold and lingering injuries. It very well might have physically given her the strength to keep going. What's that thing you keep doing? Starlight mumbled against her coat, holding tight and weathering shivers of her own. It feels weird. I don't like it. Billy blinked. Uh, nothing. Of course Starlight could feel it. She had used a higher intensity earlier to burn for her bindings on the elevator. It had a physical effect. Too bad it didn't warm the filly up. Then it would be good for both of them. Glancing around to distract herself, she spotted several pedestrian tunnels leading deeper into the groaning, glass and steel behemoth of a building, sleet pelting against their transparent casings. Which way would have Herman gone? No, which way would Scheinspark have assumed Herman went? Tunnel to the atrium? Maybe. Tunnel upwards toward flight loading docks? More likely to someone who lived in the lower districts and associated both yaks and bad with up. She took the stairs free at a time, resting her wings in case she needed them more later. The room above was closer to a tube than a dome, evenly spaced kiosks against the outer wall separating doors to the outside, movable bridges ready to link them with docked airships. The rest of the space was filled with benches and chairs for waiting, support pillars plastered with flyers and announcements and dead displays meant for showing flight schedules, advertisements, and entertainment. Don't see any ponies, Valet murmured, staring up and down the length of the room from the stairwell where she had emerged. Don't hear any ponies, but that's this place's fault for being loud. Don't smell any. With a building flash, a glowing sapphire streak zoomed past them, slowly breaking in the distance before returning and landing in front of them with a shimmer of magic. Valet blinked, then grinned. Hey, Sparky! Wow, you look even worse than the last time I saw you. Shinespark looked back at them, trembling beneath her orange coat, eyes dead and muted. Valet, she croaked, staring almost as sightlessly as Starlight. I can't find anyone. I just checked the eastern control tower. Maybe turn the west one? Okay, hold on. Valet took a cautious step toward Shinespark. Her mark said the unicorn wasn't at risk of attacking her, but it couldn't tell if her target was about to flee. You came here because of that bogus note? Listen, girl, you look like a liability to yourself and absolutely everyone right now, and I totally recommend chilling out and actually taking care of yourself real quick. Please? They're here somewhere, Shinespark murmured. I need to find them. Valet rolled her eyes. Had she not read the back of the note? Or did she just not care? Look, my own reasons for being here are flimsy enough at the moment, but hunting Herman is... My reasons aren't flimsy, Shenspark interrupted, emotion building in her voice. The spirit weren't at Blue Leaf. I looked. The defense force had a blockade, but they must have teleported past. I already searched the entire other terminal, so they must be in this one. Help me find them. Hurry. She grabbed Valet's shoulders, muscles so close to Valet's own that she could smell the unicorn's breath. Hold on. What? Valet narrowed her eyes. The spirit? You're not here about Herman? Herman? Shinespark blinked, a snap of lucidity returning to her eyes. I'm here about the spirit. Valet, you know how brain works. Haunted, she slumped, staring at the tile floor. I had to take back my cutie mark to survive. If I would turn brain into an empty suit of armor, the spirit and Blueleaf would think their leader had abandoned them. But I was their leader for so many years. I told them whatever they needed to hear to retain hope, no matter how extreme. But I thought... When I planned for this flood, if the worst happened, I thought Brain would still be there to guide them. 
I wanted them to defend the Earth District in case the defense force were true barbarians and attacked while we were down. But now I'm not there and they're not there and... She collapsed, covering her head with her hooves. Oh, bananas. Groaning, careful not to throw off starlight, Valene knelt and tried to prompt Shinespark up. You didn't even go to Skyfreeze, did you? Just the Skyport? Just running after your nutcase bandit squad? I wasted all my time chasing you up there? What's in Skyfreeze? Shinespark asked, wiping a hoof across her eyes. Valet, Brain and I thought the spirit whatever it would take. I always knew we'd have to talk them down someday because an all-or-nothing world wasn't the one we wanted to build, but I assumed they'd have Brain to do that, and it wouldn't be in the middle of a war, and... She stared, pleading up into Valet's slitted eyes. I shouldn't have sat for so long in that cave. I shouldn't be sitting here now. I shouldn't have told them from the beginning that we could literally get the old Anridge back by stealing weapons and robbing convoys. Now I can find them and they could be here trying to break the skyport and with the storm and no power, the structure is already stretched to its limit. Valet sat down. Ah, sounds like you got some serious guilt issues going on there. You think? Shinespark screamed at her face, eyes regaining a flicker of their old flame. Hey, look. Valet stared seriously at her. This skyboard is totally creeping me out right now with all the storm stuff and how it feels like it's just gonna collapse or blow away or something. Like it's a coconut and the storm's a crab trying to crack it and get at us. And every minute I'm wondering more and more why I thought it was a good idea to come up here. So, you're important. Starlight's important. I'd really like to keep my butt in one piece. What do you say we bail somewhere warm and not spooky, and if this place falls over and Pancakes Herman and all the spirit goons, we say the wind blew it down and no biggie? Please? Look, I'm actually saying please. I'm ready to cut my losses here. Shinespark shook her head, mane limp and ragged from worry. The skyport is built to withstand the blizzard with no power, but barely. It will be okay on its own, but not with anything else. Besides... The spirit are my friends. I don't want them going on a suicide mission in my name, especially not Granada. Granada? Valet blinked. She's that half-sister who doesn't know she's your half-sister, wears her mane just like yours, and probably totally doesn't have a crush on you. Thanks, Shinespark growled. And yes, she is. I'm not leaving her to die, become a terrorist, or both. We have to find them and stop this. She met Valet's eyes, gripping the bad pony in her telekinesis to prevent her from looking away. Help me. I can't... I'm barely keeping myself together as it is. She sniffed, just clenching. I can't fail Ironridge again. Fine, but I'm not lifting a hoof to fight. Got it? Valet lifted her bird forehoof, waggling it for emphasis. I'm seriously done with getting kicked around. Don't want to make anyone else mad right now. I'm just in it to survive. Shinespark's aura expanded, covering both her and Valet. Then let's check the western control tower. I'm looking for places where the most damage could be done with technical knowledge. Explosives, or both. Shifting! Valet resigned herself and Starlight to being floated along, suddenly imagining finding the spirit locked in a duel with Herman. End of chapter 278